So now we're getting closer, I'm going to paint these wet, uh, wet and dry. So that this side of the mountain would be dark. Because the light's going from the right. A ridge there. Trying to buy the pattern. As we move down, we to make it darker. So I want this to, that's where the town's going to be. If you want a misty effect, you just moisten your brush and just wipe away. And you end up with mist. Just a bit there, and then I'll just to break up here. So this is the town of Vallejo, just down here. We need some dry brush there. I'm following the contours of the land, and just lift your brush up occasionally. You see a pattern emerging, change something. And then as we get closer here, we're going to start to see buildings. So I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm going to darken the paint just a little. This is going to be the focal point of the painting, just this area here where the light part of the sky is. And this is I just call this Morse code because it's just a series of squiggles and dots and dashes which if you look closely at it, it's nothing but at this kind of distance it looks like buildings Keep varying the mix Try and avoid that Horizontal line It's going to be a series of jetties and Put some yachts on the water there at some point. The thing to bear in mind is that the, the vertical should always be vertical and any dark walls should be on the left hand side of kind of building shapes. And just vary that pattern so that it's not all the same. Occasionally a sideways sweep works well like that. It just breaks up that monotony and obviously as we get further away the details are getting smaller over here than they are over here. So you put bigger marks over this side. These are typically Greek houses, with terracotta roofs. Then on the water's edge there are lots of yachts and boats and cruisers. Get to that other head, I'm gonna stop it. Just break that line up a little. And then once this is dry, we'll just add some terracotta roofs. And the job will be sorted. It's a technical phrase that one. Now these are the colours that I usually use for roof colours. Um, this one is Naples yellow. These are Tintoretto paints, so it doesn't matter what they're called. Um, this one's Naples Yellow, this one is I think English Red, Burnt Sienna and Green. And basically if it's a newish roof, I use this colour, maybe mixed with a little one of the others. If it's a sunny side of the roof, I always use this, uh, usually use this colour. Um, if it's a newish roof, I sometimes use the terracotta colours. But if it's a very old roof, I usually add green into it. And that makes it look kind of mossy and it turns it a kind of dark brown colour like this. Uh, so I'm going to use a mixture on this painting. 
obviously these roofs are a long way off so I don't want them to be too dark, too dark because over on the other on the other sections of the painting there are going to be roofs that are closer and we still want to keep that recession the distance in the painting so basically I'm just going to use little dots and dashes of terracotta so they look like roofs mainly based on this Naples yellow I just want a hint of roofs and again it's just like Morse code and then we'll just mix it up a little bit and as we get a little bit closer we'll add a bit more colour and this I would also use something like Naples yellow this one for the light side so the lights coming from the right hand side of this painting so I would use the Naples yellow for the light side and then put a few dashes of one of the dark colours to represent the shadow side and uh, it looks like a convincing town now just put some yachts further down here when, we're, when it's dry and this is how it looks uh, zoomed in Um, because I've noticed that there's some similarities here and the brush strokes here and here I'm switching now to a sword liner brush uh, which is one of my favourite brushes because I just want to make sure I get a different look to this area so I'm going to load that, they hold massive amounts of pain so I'm going to use, just use the tip to try and get some finer detail down here and then if you just press, it's a great way to paint waves as well just press and you can just drag and drag some of that colour down into here and you just get a completely different look then see the repeating brush strokes so just break something up <laughs> and then you repeat it again <laughs> mix in the paint slightly dark so this would be a light coloured ridge but this might be a dark one here so now we're coming into the foreground or closer certainly than, than the distant hills we can see a bit more detail so what I'll do is I'll get the sponge out for the mist So the mist kind of running along there, so the mist might continue just here. Just bring these down into the town. Another good tip is if you don't, if you see something that you don't like, either with a tissue or with your finger, just smooth it out. Job done. And then, if the mist was here. This is just a clean piece of sea sponge. So the mist there, and it needs to kind of continue here, maybe. So just press this really gently, and keep turning the keep turning the sponge. Quite like that hard edge there. It's got to be. Once it's picked up the paint, if you don't wash it out again, all you're going to do is put the paint back on. So that'll get washed. That'll do for that section. Once that wash is on, you can flick just with, as we're getting into the foreground now, you may see some more textures so you can see what's happening here. Can you see what's happening there? Let me zoom in. Yeah, and this section here is speckling. So that just adds texture as we move into the foreground. So now with the mountains, we've got a combination of mist, soft edges this is where the island's going to be so that's tree covered so i've softened those edges the mist carries on 
and then into the town and they get greyer and bluer as you get further away the mountains. Okay so progress so far we've got nice distance here um, I want to make sure that this is the focal area of the painting I've kept the lightest area of the sky just around this area and all these contours of the hill and the mist are all pointing down to this town so there's going to be where there's the darkest area is here I'm going to put some white yachts in there um, so I'm going to lift them out like I've done on this one um, but I noticed that there might be a lining up issue developing here this hillside looks a bit unnatural how it goes down here and also when it comes down to this point here it almost intersects where the centre of this island is going to be which may look unnatural so what I'm going to, going to do now is I'm just going to change that the shape of this hillside so it comes down to about here and I do that with um, a flat brush just a moist brush and I want to change the shape of this so I'm just going to lift out some highlights on this edge and it would be light there anyway and then just dab it with a tissue I'm changing the shape of my brush so it's not samey and then suddenly it doesn't come down to the centre of the island and I may do a, a little bit of lifting off just here we've got a real dark area here I'm just going to lift off a little bit there and maybe a little bit here and then they look quite natural now so now I've got the la la darkest area against the lightest area of the painting um, so this side is going to be painted this side of the hill is going to be painted wet into wet hard edges tend to draw your attention so it's in, it's intentional that these will all point to this town of uh, Vlijo down here but up here at the at this side of the hill I'm just move that around for you at this side of the hill I'm going to paint this wet into wet because I don't want many of these hard edges because otherwise it'll compete for attention with this side of the painting and this is the most important part of the painting where the um, where the lightest part of the sky is so this is going to hopefully be eventually the focal point of the painting and the danger is if you go too dark too soon so I started off really light here but if you go too dark too soon when you get to the foreground and obviously in this painting we've got the sky the distant hills the kind of mid distance hills the hills closest to you and then we've got this island which is the next nearest thing and then we've got these two um, let me just zoom out a little bit we've got these two here and here which are about the same distance apart and then finally we've got the foreground all along here so there's maybe one two three four five six there's about seven planes on this painting so it's important to so that you don't end up with a flat painting to make sure that the tones start light enough and then get gradually darker and darker until you move into the foreground here and that way we'll retain some distance in the painting uh, along this section here I'm going to paint there's more of the town that can be seen above this island so I'm going to paint similar to this but slightly larger so it'll be larger um, dots and dashes with some terracotta in there and then round in this section here and this section here these are the closest areas so those will have the strongest terracottas and darks and that, that way we'll get distance in the painting. So this is a te technique that I use for mid-distance trees. So these here. So the, the light's coming from this side. So this, this side of the island's trees will be lighter in tone than these. And because I know I want to feature some yachts down here. Um, and there's some jetties and a few houses and restaurants and things. Um, I'm trying to make sure that it's light here darker here but then it goes darker as you get to the water's edge as it as it normally would be so I'm going to use a kind of uh, it's a rough old bristle brush uh, that I bash around a bit so just put my piece of paper and it almost wants to be like a dry brush but the the more beat up the brushes the better it is and then into quite a light I've, I've used a 
mixed a can of bluey green up so you can really see the wet into wet or wet on dry and use this wet on dry so I'm leaving some of these light areas and if you just keep introducing changing the brush shape so just keep spinning it around if you dab it on a cloth as well you'll get let's make that a bit stronger you can add to these so we're basically painting the shadow sides of these trees and just keep spinning your brush and it's always nice if you introduce some darker towards the bottom again these are the shadow sides it's always nice just to change your brush strokes so I want it to be stronger in tone than this background and the background hills and you can see there's a little pattern emerging there so all you do is just break it up a little bit I don't want to go too green with my green here because it will compete with the what's going to be happening in, the for, in these these foreground um, trees so just keep spinning my brush it's always a good idea as well to swap brushes I'm just it's kind of wet into wet this is you see how tonally this is similar to here so I need to introduce some dark just there so it stands out from that background colour it's got to be stronger than the background now it's good to introduce a horizontal line that looks like a A jetty or something. And I'm going to go for a big swathe of it. Just spinning this rough bristle brush around. And we want, to, you're starting to see some texture in this island now. So I'm just going to dab some, actually lifting out some of the highlights now of the trees. And again, just keep changing the, just keep spinning your bit of tissue around. And then you don't get the same shape for every tree. We'll mop that up there. And then I'll go back to that same technique and we'll start to go a little darker. So this is just raw cap at mortem that I'm adding to the wet wash so I'm keeping it on the blue side of green I don't want it to be too strong well, I think it is and as I said if you make a mistake just mop it up so I'll go back to this green but I'm going to make it a little bit stronger in tone well thicker so it's getting a bit weak. That's better. And it's almost a dry brush stroke. These are just the tops of the trees on this island. So gradually as I'm working my way to the left of this island that's covered in trees I'm going to gradually make it darker so I'll start to add some dark now because it's kind of, this might be dark here as well this might be a bit darker here nice to have a contrast there against that dark hill you can see it's getting, it's lighter here it's darker over here. Add some more cap of mortar. And you've got to try and keep a wet edge. So it's important that this doesn't dry because we've got that golden time to mess with. You, know, you can only paint for a certain amount of time before you've got to stop, otherwise everything turns muddy. So now I'm going to try and introduce some boats masts here. So I'm changing brushes. 
and I'm, if you like, I'm, re, if, I don't know what you'd call it, reverse painting around these masts. So I'm going in with my dark, so these might be the dark sides of some yachts here, or some launches, put some darks on the water, and then the odd really thin mast. You've got to watch the spacing on the sides of these. So I'm going to have a big gap there. Have a tall one there. Excuse me. So you can see now how making the uh, island darker at the bottom makes these boats masts really stand out. And also what we're going to include is some reflections of those in the water. So you kind of paint in the boats, sometimes you paint the reflections first, but sometimes you paint your boats. But on this side of the island, you can see that there's, there's less lights. You leave more highlights on this side than you do on this side. And then it'll look like the lights, the sunlight's hitting it from here. And we might just do a little bit of lifting off on this side as well. Um, so I'm going to work my way now to uh, this section here. So you can see the effect now of um, making this darker towards this side of the island. And I've also lifted out just with a damp sea sponge um, some like people have lit fires and there's smoke there. So now all we need to do is look at the dark parts of the this area is still wet, this area is dry, so I can't do anything there, but this area is still wet. And if I just touch the bottom of some of these darks, I can drag them down into the water. So this is just a moist brush. The important thing is to make sure that these are... The brush was a bit moist there. So make sure you do opposite the... and literally just wipe it with your finger. It's quite a dark area there, so I'll bring that down. Dark one there, so I'll just touch that. Everything's got to be horizontal or vertical. If you just sweep with your finger, you get the effect of reflections. Okay, so now it's, uh, I've finished the island and um, I've added some small, very well-defined trees just on top of this line so it stands out against the background. So now I'm going to do the reflection of the island which I'm going to paint wet into wet. Uh, I felt things were starting to get a bit muddy so I gave myself some clean water. So I'm just adding water. I want to keep this area of dry brush here which I like. Oops, that's not meant to happen. <laughs> that's easily solved. So I'm just going to add some water to this and I want it to be a not quite as big as the island, so I'm just giving myself horizontal stripes of water really delicately. Just make sure that you, you'll see that some of these start to bleed as well, which add to the effect of the reflections. Basically, I want this to be reasonably dark in here so that when I lift out these the reflections of these masts, it'll give a nice effect. But I don't want to come below that dry brush area. So it's important that all the brush strokes are perfectly horizontal. Then into the green, which is a tone lighter than the island. I'm going to leave a gap just under here. So I'm just going to add, again, horizontal. Keep your brush strokes horizontal. Try not to lose that area that we don't want to lose. It's tempting to cover it up. We'll add a bit below it. That's dry, so we'll just dampen that. So now it's getting about the size of the island. We've kept this nice and soft. We'll just moisten the bottom line so it kind of merges into the background colour of the water. That's okay, and now we'll let that dry. Okay, so with these, uh, I've now dried this wash with the hairdryer off camera. And now I'm going to do some lifting off of the reflections of these masks. If you can look at these two brushes, this one I wouldn't even attempt to use, even though it's dry, because it doesn't go to a knife edge, but this one does. So what I'm going to do is just wet your brush and then squeeze it between your fingers. 
and then with a, with some clean tissue standing by it's just a question of finding out where the lights are above here leave a little gap come a bit further down and then just mop it and those are your reflections so it's just a question of copying everything that's above you don't have to do every single one and make them different lengths and thicknesses so just keep washing the brush out in between each lifting off the height the more vertical you have your brush the finer the line can you see how this one's finer than this one and that's because i just lifted my brush a bit more vertical so you just move away nothing happens to start with but if you're patient you get nice reflections the important thing is to keep these as vertical as the items are above them <laughs> and make sure the spacings you have to do everyone so you vary the thickness and if you want to break up these you just sweep over it with with a slightly moist brush and it'll break up those those hard edges so we need another one there another one here and we'll continue some down into that light area where you've got the big square areas like this see this here so you just work away at that there's one next to it and then quite a big one here could be a yacht side on that's that one a bit more here right can you see how nothing's happening with my brush it's because I dried it too much so it's just having the right amount of moisture to move the paint sometimes use the corner of it if you've got a an odd shape like that one again it's a little too dry so wash the brush again you've got to keep washing out in between each lifting off otherwise what happens is um, it soaks up the pigment and then all you're doing is just putting the same pigment back on so you've got to keep washing your brush out in between every section of lifting off I have a, quite a big one there This one's yeah, quite like that. I'll have a little bit happening here. Again, too dry. Just nice if you vary them. This area here, can you see how there's the effects of smoke just in this section, just there? You can get the same effect in the water just by using the corner of a little sponge and again just mop it until it starts to move and then just dab it with your tissue and you've got your reflection of your smoke and just keep working your way along and you can also add some dark reflections into this as well at this distance you won't be seeing much in the way of colour it's just literally um, darks and lights Hope that helps to break some of these there's lots of uh, vertical lines now on this and you can introduce what they call a wind hole which is uh, it's a kind of cam patch or is it where the wind catches I'm never sure but basically I'm using a big one and a half inch flat brush now I've squeezed all the water out of it and I'm just gonna wipe it on the heel of my hand and then just pick an area where you think it might need something it ends kind of abruptly there so I'm gonna introduce another one and then again just mop it if you don't mop it it ends up being quite pale but if you do mop it it ends up being quite sharp so you can just vary it sometimes mop it and other times not and you can do the same technique for the yachts in the water in Vallejo Bay there's quite a lot of boats mowed up offshore and it's exactly the same technique so literally these boats are quite small now, so we're coming mid-distance, so they're going to get a little bit bigger. So you just give yourself the boat. And we'll add the holes on later. And the reflection in the water. That's, it can be the same size or it can be bigger. But again, just make sure that the spacing's 
vary. I have a reflection there. And most of the boats, the tide comes in, uh, well, whatever tide there is, comes in here. So most boats will be mooring off with the front of the boats pointing to the right. So when I paint all the hulls, I'll be bearing that in mind. So just work away along. So we wouldn't put one just there. So let's space it a bit more. Let's have it a bit taller this time. And then we'll have its reflection here. So everything vertical and everything horizontal when you're doing boats. So some of these will end up with shadow on the left hand sides and some of them won't. It depends on the distance and whether or not I want them to stand out. There actually is a sunken boat down here that I'm going to include. But also here, where this real dark area is, remember this is the focal point. So with a really almost vertical brush, just want to introduce some distant yachts in that area. So just choose the area where it's darkest to include the lightest things. It's one of the busiest harbours I've ever seen. It's one of the safest as well, except that it had a huge hurricane about five years ago, I think it was. And loads of boats were, this is where all the boat yards are along here. And some of the boats were uh, damaged. They had an earthquake last year as well. We got away with it. So just work your way along until you've got loads and loads of boats mowed up. 